Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. We are the 3rd October of 2023. Today, around the table, we got myself, Damien Duportal, Mark Waite, Stephen Merle, Bruno Verarten, and Kevin Martins. Hervé uh, most probably won't be able to attend. He had a medical appointment. Okay, let's get started with announcements and uh, major elements. So, the weekly release 2.426 is, is out, at least the world, the packages, and the Docker image. I'm not absolutely sure for the Docker image because there seems to be an issue uh, with the Windows uh, virtual machines on Azure since uh, earlier today. Um, so that's a second element I'm adding immediately. Um, issues so oh, meaning uh, yep. damien i'm not sure i understood that so we're you're not sure if the containers are built yet um yeah I, I believe the linux image might already have been pushed to the docker hub but the windows image bits are not there yet i i believe i haven't checked let me check on my, my other screen i'll i and i can check yeah. because it, i've i've got it's a process still being built uh, both controller agent and SSH agents are waiting since minutes and hours. Uh, so yeah, Docker image, Linux, okay, but Windows is waiting. See below. And I assume the other changelog item will be done later as usual. Uh, changelog is already done oh, cool. and merged and published. Thanks to Kevin. He did a, an excellent job. And then I did some additional tweaks after that. So it's, it it's yeah. Changelog is merged. I let I actually, let me check. I think it should be visible by now because it was merged 10 or 15 minutes ago. Cool. Nice job folks. Yes, it's um, two major changes. You wrote them, so I assume that's worth mentioning them for the infrastructure. Yeah, so one is removal of prototype JS, that 10 year old JavaScript library that we started the removal of it back in May of 2023 is now actually removed from weekly. It's been through We've been through, I think, several hundred plugins to make sure that it was removed from them. And special thanks to Basil Crow and to Tim Jacome for excellent work on getting that all the way to the end. Now, weekly, it won't show, it won't be visible to us on ci.jenkins.io until November 15 with the next Sorry. baseline. But that means for the infrastructure team, we need to be careful on infra.ci, which we'll use weekly. Mm. And we will have weekly.ci.jenkins.io updated. So the worth checking, let's say, the minimum use cases shown on that public instance. Yes. Uh, and, and what is the second major change? Is it also container Container images that don't specify a JDK are now using Java 17. So oh. if you if you use latest, I know friends don't let friend use friends use latest. But if you're using latest, you will get Java 17 now instead of Java Java 11. Uh, likewise, if you're using Alpine, which is an implicit latest, you'll get Java 17. If you're using S Slim, you'll get a Java 17 container now, if I remember correctly. So it's it's if you're asking for a container and not specifying JDK in the container label, then you'll get Java 17. Okay. Um, important thing is that that change will be de facto cherry picked to the next LTS release, whatever kind of LTS it is, because this change is only on the Docker image repository. Is that okay, okay. for everyone? I think that's excellent. It just means Kevin has to be sure that when he creates the change log for the next LTS, uh, and the next LTS release candidate should be available tomorrow, I believe is the, the due date for it. So 
So he'll get the request soon to create the, the change log and we need to be sure it's included, but it's already in the weekly. So he just has to remember to go pull it from the weekly and copy it into the LTS change log. Cool, thanks for the details. Congrats for that work. Is there something else on that new weekly? Uh, those those were the two big ones. Then yep. yeah, other there are there certainly are others, but those were the two big ones. So the second one for the infrastructure team, we won't be impacted by that change because we already stick to GDK seventeen. So yeah. <laughs> But that means we will soon um, be able to start the GDK21 sticking. <laughs> so uh, second announcement, it looks like uh, this week we have uh, uh, Azure v VM issues. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, VPN was down. Um, first sight, the, it looks like the, there was a Grub package automatic upgrade that failed. Um, Grub package failing. So the, the system had to roll back the bootloaders. And once we were back to the working machine, we had to upgrade, finish the upgrade by ourselves. But that indicates an underlying issue on the Azure system, but nothing on the status Jenkins IO. So we thought maybe it's only our VM, but since that uh, this night, so uh, since 10 hours, more or less, um, the allocation of Windows virtual machines uh, takes some time on our subscription, but just the Windows 2019. So Windows 2019 VM allocation is uh, is flaky. Okay, so, sorry to interrupt, but for example, I have a build which has been stuck since, uh, no, for 21 hours because of, um, non-available windows machine is it linked in any case yes. to okay yes it's flaky so ci.g trusted.ci.g and cert.ci.g are impacted so yeah since 24 hours uh yesterday we delivered a new version of the packer image so that could be related the, the issue here is that some of the virtual machines are working and building and some aren't allocated with timeout from Azure API. So that's why there is something weird here. Still not sure the real root cause, so gotta gotta check. Uh, but yeah, that has, a, that has the kind of impact you just described. We're waiting for Docker Dash Windows. I believe we should be able to open the status page after that meeting and add a message on top of CI Jenkins. Are you? to let you know. Uh, which explain why the container images for Windows are slow to build because it takes time and it reached time out of the builds. Need status and Jenkins.io message. Container images slow to build. Uh, that's all for the Azure Virtual Machine issues. Is there anything else on that topic? Do you have question or action? No, okay. So Java 17 is the new default GDK on container. So that's why we, that's the second major change. Is that okay for everyone? Yep. One last uh, announcement then I will replace the third point is that um, we had services done during a few days last week. Um, so I don't remember, we had a plugin L score, incremental publisher and reports.jenkins.io. Uh, so the second and the third one had impact on the plugin developers. That uh, the reason is uh, the person currently speaking. Uh, we have wrote issues with postmortem, but that I wanted to to put it on top of the items just to let you know, uh, because the yeah uh, will uh, I've learned a lesson on the way Kubernetes and L manage links between 
object when you want to delete some object. Mm. So the let's say the summary is first remove the link and then do a second upgrade on garbage collect object and don't do both on the same upgrade. That doesn't work. Uh, that was an opportunity for us to improve the the monitoring because these services weren't. That's all for the announcement. Do you, do you have other announcements? Okay. So let's have a look at the upcoming calendar. The next weekly is next week as usual. Uh, we will be the third ten. Um, I don't know when is the next LTS planned. 2.414.3. Uh, 2023-10-18. Uh, no, no, four, four. I'll get it in there. 414.3. Okay, my bad. Thanks. Uh, thanks. We just can't do that tomorrow. Uh, no, no, that's a different thing. So, oh. or no, is that? No, no, you're right. Release candidate tomorrow. Right. Nice one. Um, Jenkins Security Advisory. We don't have Jenkins Security Advisory. Right. Cool. Uh, next major event. So we had two DevOps World where Mark was present, as far as I can tell. And, and next um, is in Santa Clara, October 18th. Santa Clara DevOps World, Santa Clara, October 18, 18 you say? 18 and 19, yes. It was then February 2024, as usual. Yeah, and they've, they've, they've actually announced the specific dates, right? I think it's four and five or three and four. Uh, yes, that first three week. Four. Three, three and four. four. Cool. So an opportunity to meet the team member. Any questions so far? Okay, so let's start with the work we were able to finish. Um, so we can thank Hervé, team, and Gavin to, uh, for solving that issue about one of our plugins. Uh, a contributor uh, maintaining a plugin was complaining that despite them changing everything to have the GitHub documentation uh, shown on plugins, Jenkins, so you, the old wiki documentation was still used. So no abuse error, no build error when the plugin website is uh, is changed, and uh, by uh, yeah by phishing informations, uh, we were able to check that the update center generator has an override capability. Most of the time, it's because security or emergency infrastructure changes, and that plugin was inside these overrides. So whatever um, value was set up for the plugin was overridden every 15 minutes when the update center index is generated, which forced the, the documentation to be used to the wiki URL instead of the auto-detected GitHub. So after learning that mechanism and removing the overrides, every was able to update the whole system and now everything is going fine as usual. And, and that overrides file is inside the update center or that... absolutely let me open the wow. issue okay no, no need i i i'm sure that's that's just quite quite the surprise yep that's the we uh, wiki overrides dot properties file inside the resources there and here we have a lot of plugins so if you see a plugin that looks like it it follow every recommendation and still the wiki is still shown on plugin Jenkins IO, then check if the plugin isn't overridden here. So Thank thanks uh, everyone. Um, so the plugin will score one of the free services that was down. 
Uh, so I've tried to write down a post-mortem after fixing it. So thanks, Adrien Le Charpentier, for pointing, uh, for removing this to our attention. We were able to fix it. And in order to avoid reproducing that issue, uh, we had it monitoring. We had monitoring, but the monitoring was checking only a redirect um, from HTTP to HTTPS. And the thing is that with our Kubernetes system, the funny part is even if the backend is down answering HTTP 5 or 3, the redirect HTTP to HTTPS is still done. The HTTP 5 or 3 is the result of the redirect. So yeah, we added, um, we added a, a probe. So now if the service goes down, for whatever reason, we will be alerted and we will be able to avoid waiting five days. By the way, that could be the reason why the previous plugin not only had an issue with their documentation, bit, but also with their in ill score probe. Because I believe if they change elements during that, uh, that outage, uh, I'm not sure how is the system working on details, but that was bringing to Adrien attention that maybe we need to recalculate a few plugins. I don't know what the frequency is, but that, that could be related or it's just me, my gen. Any question? Okay, uh, same thing for rating the Jenkins.io. So that one was fixed and RP was run. Same reason, exactly. Uh, so Hervé was able to add um, uh, also same same fix. Uh, it wasn't monitored. So now it's fixed and yeah, nothing else to add here. Uh, we should be able to catch this issue next time. Uh, we had a user who lost the, an access to the publi to the repository. So like most of the time, they had an issue with their Maven configuration. In that case, that was a subtle one. I think it's worth sharing it with you folks. Mm. I'm not really sure of the root cause, but um, we use two different IDs on the POM and POM parent and example and documentation for plugin developers. Uh, we tend to have the down, what I call the download repository. So the repository on a Maven POM XML file that describe where to get the build dependencies and the, the, uh, the project dependencies. And that one tend to be marked with an idea of repo jenkinsci.org. I'm opening an example here. You can see we have repository with that ID. Mm -hmm. And the POM parent that helps developer not having to care to, to define all the dependency management is defined to maven.jenkins.ci.org. I believe it's something from the past that has been kept because change POM parent is not an easy thing. Some plugins are, um, update often, some are not updated since years. So changing this one is way more difficult. But I realized that since they wanted to publish a new plugin manually, which I consider myself a bad practice, we have a CD process for that and the human shouldn't be responsible for pushing and deploying a release. But in that case, you have to be careful in the way you configure your settings XML. I believe the documentation is up to date uh, because they follow carefully the documentation. So I'm opening the documentation page, which say you have to configure your server XML with the same ID. So the credential shown here will match. However, there might be a weird behavior where Maven check the URL of both repositories and say, oh, it's the same. And sometimes repo is first and sometimes Maven is first. So uh, my proposal is maybe we should update the documentation here and tell them, oh, don't use the settings XML from Artifactory as it, but instead change it, copy and paste this one and create a second server entry with the same username, same password, but you must use repo.jenkinsci.org as ID for the second one. So, so now, but I thought that maven.jenkins-ci.org was the preferred just because of the history that repo is, is 
used in URLs, but not in. Okay, so I'm clearly not understanding. I'll need to ask you some more questions ah. later, Damien. Okay, no problem. But I believe we should be able to improve documentation here. Mm. I'm not sure if it was the real problem of the user. They say this worked after I gave them this instruction. Mm. So maybe it's a misconfiguration of their plugin, but for me, it will be worth it to say, okay, we need to set up credential for both. The takeaway for us is that any developers with that setup will start using the LDAP account to be a, to authenticate the request to Artifactory. So in any case, that will be easier for us to track the usages of these developers. So in any case, it's a good thing. Is, does it look good for everyone? That, that means that the LDAP will start to get more more work. Yes, but that's that's not a lot. Okay. And we still have so much margin for this. Um yeah, that's that's all, but that was worth sharing. Um okay, next issue unless you have a question. No question? Okay. Uh, Archive Jenkins IO, that service uh, is now running on DigitalOcean instead of Oracle Cloud. The virtual machine has been moved. Uh, I haven't checked yet the, the, the impact on the outbound bandwidth cost on DigitalOcean itself. I haven't monitored this one. Uh, we can afford 500 gigabyte outbound per month before starting to pay for it. That's the threshold. So yeah, worth checking during the month of October because that is a public web server. Um, so yeah, that that one has been done properly. Uh, that was really, really easy. The, the most complicated part was to find the areas where that machine was accessed through SSH. But uh, yeah, I don't have anything else to add on this one. Everything, including Runbook, has been updated. Is there any question on this one? No, I'm pleased to note that the zero, the costs from Oracle Cloud for October one and October two were zero dollars. Yes, which means we have cleaned up properly. Mm -hmm. Thanks right. for confirming. Next issue is a minor one, uh, TFSEC, which is a static analyzer for Terraform files, uh, started to show warning and important messages that the organization developing it, Aqua Security, uh, was focusing and shifting their effort to Trivi, their homemade uh, common line static analysis, which cover the same features as TFSEC, but also had other things. It can scan container images and chart and a bunch of stuff. Um, so that's why we decided to move our Terraform analysis to Trivi. We could benefit from the other features in the future, but right now, uh, yeah, uh, it was only for Terraform project. So the shift has been done. TFSEC has been removed from all of our assets and Trivi is available instead. Any question? Okay, uh, we had the account issue, but the person never answered. So thanks, Mark, for taking care of this one. Now let's move to the work in progress. So the issues that were started and we that on which one we worked or this should have worked during the past milestone. And for each one, we will decide, of course, if we continue working it on the next milestone, move them to the backlog or stop working on them. Um, first one, access to GitHub packages in the plugin. That one is interesting. <laughs> so we have a plugin developer who happened to work at Red Hat who build a plugin that require a Java dependency on the plugin, a jar file, which is not on Maven Central or a public Maven repository, but on a GitHub packages repository. So so of course, that means you cannot access publicly without a GitHub access token to these packages. As you can see on my screen here, they, 
the documentation is really useful. They say, hey, add the dependency and etc. But only inside a GitHub environment with a GitHub token. Of course, when we build on CI Jenkins IO or when a contributor builds on the machine, they can they cannot because it requires and mandates having a GitHub account. So so they ask the question what will be the solution and the possibilities. Um, one of the possibilities they ask was well, can we move these dependencies to the Jenkins public artifactory, which technically will solve their problem, but the we tend to have that policy that say, hey, if we host it, we have the code and the properties and the legals, because if we need to update in emergency for security or legal reason, the, uh, the binary, that means we need to have an actionable or lever somewhere. Uh, my, belie my belief is that they don't use a public artifactory Maven or Maven Central for legal reason or license reasons. So that's why they are using GitHub package. So that's why I've proposed the solution. But yeah, there has been discussion, no feedback since four days. Uh, my, pro my proposal is to use the same pattern as other plugin developers. They can store the jar file on the source code of their plugin. So it's their responsibility, modulo the license, but I mean, we have license check, and if someone from the security team on Jenkins discover that there is a license thing, they will just remove the dependency and stop the plugin. And if they have the jar, they can control the update process. And we have solutions, so a given Maven file, uh, like the Qualis Qualis plugin, can reference the local repository. So let's wait from a feedback from them. If they don't give us a feedback, uh, end of milestone, we close this issue next week. Is that okay for everyone? Yes, I, I'm. The thought of checking binaries into Git repository scares me, but done it before, and yes, it can it can work. Uh, that's what we have to do. Yep. Uh, same for me, but I mean. That's a solution for them if they want to continue building their plugin. And as Tim proposed, they can also try to publish on Maven Central or other public repository or host their own. Uh, next issue, GOS, the, the test framework a la server spec uh, for our Packer images. So, in order to define the images for the virtual machine container, Linux and Windows virtual machines that we use on, the, on our controllers. So we have a contributor who helped us, who started to help us with tri trigger a lot of exchange, exchanges between Stefan High and that contributor, which led to A, hey, let's increase the test coverage by shifting to sanity checks that are run and part of our provisioning script to something else that say, hey, let's connect as Jenkins user and check that tool, that tool, that tool. This acceptance test would use GOS, which is a framework that you use, uh, that can work on both Windows and Linux that you can use with a wrapper named DGOS on containers. So that's really easy with this one to, um, inst it's already installed on the machine. So we could run a set of tests which are easier to maintain than BATS or PowerShell Pester or whatever framework. Um, and it has been changed and updated by Stefan to cover Linux. Uh, we cover all GDK and Trivi. So now, if I understand correctly, Stefan, the next step will be to move all the sanity check to that acceptance test harness, except if we have oh. some specific ones, right? All or most of them at least, yes. Okay, and start to do the same on both Windows and Linux. Exactly. The main and challenge. You, and you want to use yeah, sorry. On... Yeah, sorry, go that, ahead. That's probably what you will what you will say because I think it's in the comment down. Yeah. Exactly. Good catch. Um, the main challenge here, uh, I say challenge, but that's a big word, is that that means instead of we we want 
only check that we can execute the binary. We will run the binary through Ghost and check for the version or something from the STD out. For instance, we will check that Java dash dash version answer 11 and soon 17. By default, that uh, OPT bin Java GDK 21 bin Java answer 21 on its output which means each time we have an automated pull request that update a dependency, we have to also set it up so that it also updates the GOS checks. Otherwise, it will fail. That's the challenge. It's more temporal, uh, yeah, temporal challenge than really a technical challenge. And, and that's why using the new key in, uh, in the GOS file with, um, uh, I think the step is exec, uh, make it easier to, to track in the update yep. CLI manifest. I believe we have an example here. Uh, and let's see what does the file looks like. Let's see the, the new file now is here. So GOS test harness is described with that YAML uh, syntax. We are only testing for command. We can test for files, users, packages, and other technical elements. You have file so, like 32. Uh, yeah, true. I forgot about this one. So yeah, that's a way for us to check that it's a contract between us, the, the builders and provider of the images, and the consumers, at least on CI Jenkins side. And is, is, any... yep. is the tool available for all the architectures we support, including the rather obscure ones like System 390? Um, I haven't checked, but it's Golang, so is really easy to build it. Okay, great. Excellent. Uh, so at minimum, it's yep. available for ARM, all the ARM platforms yes. and the, the, the Intel platforms. Great. Yes. Linux, uh, ARM, and Intel is uh, out of the box. Windows and macOS, both uh, for macOS, uh, Intel, and IRM is still experimental. Uh, you need to set up a special flag or environment variable, but it works for what we do. Um, commands are easy uh, and walk out of the box. So, Stefan, do you think you should be able to continue working on this? I will try, of course, yes. Uh, so, we'll move this to the next milestone. I, on my side, is also working on uh, the Windows Ghost port uh, for further things. Uh, so, yeah, uh, let's continue working with this one. Uh, we have an issue, remove Oracle Cloud project and tools. So that was a joint work uh, from Mark and I. So I have the pleasure to say that as Mark uh, confirmed with the billing, we don't have any resources running on Oracle Cloud. So now the two last steps are administrative. Uh, we need to ensure that all the bills are paid and that the account is closed. Mark and I still have access to the account, but the rest of the SSO integration with Azure all the leftovers have been removed. Yeah, so uh, and I, yep. the action item is now actually an Oracle's Oracle's uh, billing team. Uh, they made a change that made it so I can't actually pay them for three of the invoices. <laughs> and but then they said, please pay us. And I said, I can't. And now they're working to try to find a way so that they can make it so that we can pay them. But it's oh, it's their action item. Worst case, they could sponsor us and say, "Hey, right. it's okay. they could just say it's a donation, right?" <laughs> I'm I'm okay with accepting their donation as well. The time spent on, with the accountants might be yeah worth spending on something else. But that, yeah, who am I? <laughs> that is a financial decision they get to make. That is not our not our concern. They get to decide how they spend their financials. Yes, absolutely. So is that okay, Mark, if we move that issue on the next milestone, considering that's only for reporting? Yes, yeah, I, no objection to put it in the next milestone. And at some point we may close it just to get it out of our list, even if it's not resolved because it's outside of what any of us can do anything about. Yep, I propose we had the full milestone before doing uh, taking that decision. Is that okay for you? Yes, I like that. Uh, next, there is uh, another question on the Oracle topic. Um, the next topic is speed up the Docker image library to create push tags at the same time. So uh, yeah. that one was put on hold during last milestone. Am I correct? I was okay. sick, I'm sorry. 
Oh. Uh, do you feel like you could work on this during the upcoming milestone, uh, Stefan? I will try, yes. Okay, so I'm keeping it on the next milestone. Nothing specific to say here. We need it to be sure that we publish images faster with less complexity. And that's all. And cheaper. Uh, yes, that should be cheaper because less builds. Good point. Next issue, remove account request field from Jira login page. I need help from a Jira administrator or someone who know their way on Jira. I don't I understand the issue. It's changing something on the pop-up, but I'm too scared to try things on Jira. I don't want to break everything. So yeah, I will need help on that topic. I'm not sure who I could ask for help on this one. I believe Tim has access, right? Daniel Beck, Tim Jacom are the two people that I would I would entrust that one to. Uh, Basil Crow could probably do it as well, but he would he would have to watch while you did it because I don't think he's actually a Jira admin, but he's done Jira admin before. Okay, um, I will start with Tim since he might right. had issue, but it was one month ago, so we'll double check with him then. So right. I put it here. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Stefan, can you give us gives us a heads up on the HA uh, properties of the replicated services? Yes, it's split between two uh, different. It's it's anti affinity on one side and and pod disruption budget on the other one. <clears throat> Sorry, we um, we are almost there. I think there is only four services to go. And uh, and then we will be able to go back to the IRM sixty four migration. For um, for to remember, it's uh, the way uh, we handle the repartition of the pods between nodes, and to make sure that when we uh, recycle or reboot or, or kill a, a node, in the the services under it and the pods still have pods somewhere else to handle the the load, and we are not out in the blue. That's anti-affinity and put disruption budget to make sure of the anti-affinity. And tons yeah. of unit tests because we love it. Yeah, I'm I'm driving uh, Stefan to dream about write the test, <laughs> then write the dream. code, then refactor even for Elm charts. <laughs> Or have nightmares. Or yeah, that, that's 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 night nice too. Test driven development is a thing. Keep going. That's exactly that. That's exactly that. You 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 wrongly spelled nightmare driven development, but yeah, <laughs> who am I to judge? <laughs> um thanks. Need help from Tim or Daniel. Uh, we almost done. Two free services left. Um, we saw interesting, um, interesting, let's say, behaviors. Uh, because the way we have set up the HA, we had it on T affinity, but our on T affinity that say, hey, I'm a replicated service, and I see there is already a replica running on that machine which tend to trigger quite often the autoscaler. So combined with the pod, the, the pod disruption budget that say, hey, you must always have one running pod. The behavior we tend to see is that it's, it autoscale up the virtual machine, start a new machine, start the pod on it, and only when it started, then it remove one, and then everything start to, to change, which keeps the high availability as we expect, but our deployment takes a bit longer and we have to wait and 10 minutes expensive. before the autoscaler uh, dynamically reschedule everything properly and scale down to the minimum amount of machines. So that means the auto scale up and down on Azure is still really efficient yeah. and dynamic. Second funny thing is that we discovered that some of our uh, charts or installation or services we install tend to have either too much replicas, which we decreased. For instance, Jenkins.io, 
because we are fast in front, so we don't need five pods running, two are absolutely okay. So we decrease these usages and some as a public Nginx ingress uh, tends to have different kind of deployments with different roles. In the case of Nginx, you have one reverse proxy deployment with two replicas for high availability. And we have a deployment of a backend web server that serves some 404 pages when we have a 404. And all of these one are currently uh, uh, mixing it, each other with the Antifinity. So we have three pods, which means we have three virtual machines under. We can't shrink down the usage. It's temporary. It costs a few bucks, but no more than 100 bucks per month on the projection I made. We will fix this element, but we weren't aware of these behaviors, so we need to fine tune in order to optimize the, the resource consumption. On the other hand, with when we have always three machines, that means the auto scale up, scale down, we, tend, we started to see at the beginning, won't exist anymore because we will always have a, more, a third machine available when deploying a service. So that's pro and cons. Yeah, if we, if we have two uh, record uh, couldn't maximum, if we, if we have three or four, it's, it's dead with only three nodes. It's just because the count of, of pods we ask for is two. So yeah, that one is um, doesn't look like much, but we learned a lot on the behaviors of the, the scheduler and the behavior of our application. Uh, as, a mem as a reminder, we need this issue to be finished before starting the work for Kubernetes 1.26 upgrade. Any question? No, next one then, Matomo. Uh, we were able to work on Matomo. So the MySQL instance is now started, created, and we have an empty database running inside our private network on the public cluster. Uh, and the Docker images is now built for and released for both Intel and RM64, and it's built. So the next step now is to start and uh, bootstrap the first installation on the public cluster. Uh, with the custom image and the database we created. So that require using and setting up the Elm chart, the official Matomo Elm chart and installing it. And then we will start uh, being able to run the service. So we are making good uh, steps and I believe we should have something to test next week. Is there any question? Image and be okay. No, okay. So then next step, M chart initial installation. Um, Artifactory bandwidth reduction option. Mark, it was on your area. All right. So let's let's list it as done. Uh, I received the final logs from from JFrog. Unfortunately, log format changed. And I'm not willing to do the effort to deal with the change log format. We're just going to say, yes, it's done. <laughs> As logs format change, we'll see result measured by GFrog. Okay, makes sense. Right. Okay, for that's, me. That's the simplest approach. I've, I'm just accepting that I'm not. It's not a good investment of my time, at least, to adapt for only one analysis of the log files. It's just not okay. worth it. Um, can I ask you then to close the issue with a message explaining this? I um, will do the that. Two of us will schedule the meeting with Gfrog. Uh, uh, I actually, to... I don't even think we need a meeting. They've, they've, I think, said we're done. So okay. I, I don't think they've asked for any any additional meetings. I think we are okay. just done. Okay. If, so I'm if they ask for a new meeting, we can certainly schedule it. Okay, cool. Uh, so then I'm moving that issue on the done steps. Mm -hmm. and I will let you close it. I will so, do that. Thanks, Mark. So Artifactory is done. Yes. Um, unsure remove Jenkins IO pages aren't accessible and indexed anymore. That issue was put on hold. 
because Hervé uh, wasn't available to work on it. He focused on updates, Jenkins IO. But he still uh, searched and saw a lot of things. He did a backup of Jenkins.io, and I believe he communicated with uh, you folks from the documentation team about yeah, the results. So um, I believe that uh, he's going to plan uh, operation on eventually next week, unless there is a blocker. Uh, we have backup and snapshot, so the goal will be to say, hey, let's snapshot at a given moment, deploy the new version, which removes the hold pages and see the, the result. And if we start to have issues that we can catch or user opening issue on community or LDesk or Jenkins IO trackers saying, hey, that page is gone or whatever, then we can start either cherry picking on short term the, from the backup and then fix on the rebuild. Or if we see it's catastrophic, then we, we restore the backup and we go back to the former things and just remove the to be deleted pages manually if we want to solve the other issues that cause that one. Make sense for you folks? Uh, so Hervé will communicate once ready. I'm not sure if you will be able to run this one this week since he's still focused on updates, Jenkins IO, but I will see with him uh, if we can share the burden on updates, Jenkins IO. So by default, I will move it to the milestone and I will let him either remove it if he feels like he won't be able to walk and we will add it back in one week or when he will be ready. Any question? Okay, next. Uh, updates Jenkins IO, which is our top priority, hence it's the last issue here. <laughs> um, so I can tell that we successfully uh, managed an error to bucket in Cloudflare, in our Cloudflare sponsorship. Um, and we were able to use it and used it as a mirror. So we have a mirror bits test instance only for update Jenkins IO running in production and publicly available. And if you use the proper URL, you can have that mirror serving the files. Now, uh, the work in progress that Hervé is working on is, is going to update at least two scripts, which are critical um, in order to copy the updates in the, the update center JSON file, not only on the current update Jenkins IO, but also on the two location we use for that new system on the, what we call the reference Azure buckets, which is where the mirror bits is watching the files and the changes. And on the R2 Cloudflare, which mean we will have free location with the real life changes happening every 15 minutes. It should not have any impact on the current update Jenkins IO, but that will allow us to start testing for real the new service. Um, copying the update JSON, not only to PKG VM, but also to Azure Bucket and R2 Bucket. Uh, under the hoods, that will mean installing S3 command line and Azure command line on the trusted stat permanent agent, which is managed with Puppet, and then adding credentials on trusted CI Jenkins IO for both buckets, which are different from the existing credential. Tests that we can copy random file from a Dumi build on trusted CI Jenkins IO running on the agents. And finally, open the pull request on update center two for copying the update center JSON, but also something that Hervé cooked on the crawler. The crawler job is a job that once a week generates the Jenkins tools installer metadata. And the crawler is also copying file to update Jenkins IO under the slash updates uh, subdirectory. So good catch Hervé on this one because I totally missed it personally. And uh, yep, yeah. so he should be able to report last week. The next step for him is once this is done, once we have 
the same content, we will try your real life controller to request that new service. Is there any question on that status? So of course, we'll continue working on that issue. Um, let's check the new issue if we have some and the new topics that uh, if you have some to bring. Do you have new topics um, on your own? None from me. Okay, so let's look all together on the issue we see here. Oh, not able to log in. So that one will be on the triage later. Uh, Jira email status from Sendgrids. Stefan, can you explain oh, and help I'm us sorry, triaging that issue? I forgot this one. Um, that's um, a Daniel request to uh, be able to get access to the um, send grid dashboard uh, of the account corresponding of the of the Jira configuration in order to be able to have data about the mail that are, are not going through to the, the Jenkins developers, plugin developers. Because you got uh, one maintainer of a plugin that said that uh, one of his email wasn't receiving the emails, but the, the Gmail one was, and um, and you would like us to be able to have more information on that. So if I understand correctly, it's on SendGrid, it's not on Jira, right? In fact, Jira is using a SendGrid yep. account to send the email, so it's on SendGrid that we will have all the SMTP logs that okay. we should have. Okay, so that means we, we will have to add that issue. I believe we have access to SendGrid account. I, I don't, I never remember. Uh, yeah, otherwise we will need to ask access. Uh, there is one that Hervé and I asked, uh, one of the email systems that we have access to. And I believe it's SendGrid, but I'm not completely sure. So go to check. Okay, thanks for the explanation. It's clear for me and I'm adding it to the milestone I will create. And we, uh, that will be on Hervé and I to check the SunGrid access, share it with Mark and Stefan if it's not the case. And then from there, uh, Stefan, you should be able to take over and uh, fulfill the request with Daniel. Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, migrate Terraform state from AWS S3 to Azure buckets. Uh, so that one is one I created. We have, uh, in order to manage the Terraform state of our project, which are sensitive data. Uh, you can see that as database for Terraform, where that database has the history of all the changes that went through the infrastructure as code management. So of course it has credentials and it's sensitive. We use these states um, on shared storage that are private. And some of our projects are uh, started with S3 buckets, private S3 buckets that sh that uh, host these Terraform states. And some of other projects were using Azure buckets. Uh, in the effort of moving away as much resources as possible from uh, AWS, that means the projects with the Terraform states hosted on S3 buckets needs to be moved on Azure buckets. So we need to create the Azure buckets migrate the state, check that the job are still performing without destroying the infrastructure, and then remove the leftover S3 buckets. So it's just that, yeah, we have to communicate when we do these elements, but that shouldn't be something complicated. There is a lot of documentation and there is a command uh, that is able, that should be able to migrate state to the new systems. So uh, I'm I'm willing to work on this one. Anyone interested can pair with me or take over some. I think we only have two or three projects on the six we have, so that should be easy. One of them was Oracles and it has been deleted, so it's one less to, to execute. Is there any question on this one? No, okay. Um, I believe we have one that should be started, but no pressure on finishing it though. Uh, Kubernetes 1.26. 
Um, because now that Stefan has almost finished the AI availability topic, I believe we can start on the next milestone with upgrading at least the cube cuttle uh, binaries and starting the process of checking the change log. The goal will be once the HA is finished, we can start discussing a date for Kubernetes 1.26 upgrade. Is that okay for you? Okay, I will add afterwards the, the link to the issue. Uh, yeah, so anyone interested can contribute. It's Oktoberfest, so if you want to try things, upgrading Kubernetes 1.26 shouldn't be that complicated. Uh, of course, if it is, or if you want to discover, because if you don't know, you don't know, uh, please ask the team on IRC. Uh, I will uh, mark the, e the associated issue as a good first issue uh, on the proper location. I got two topics. I'm not sure we'll be able to work on them, but I want to mention them. First one on the area of Packer. Um, Windows container. So I'm mentioning it because in fact, I already started to work on it uh, as a submarine, but the wall uh, GOS is one of the foundation required for that. The goal is to also build Windows containers uh, with Packer. That's the only element that, no, that's one of the only element we don't, we don't use Packer for, and that should be technically possible now. I successfully built it on my local machine and on standalone machine. And I'm now I'm dealing with word pipeline behavior that I don't understand. Uh, I believe we uh, want to wait for the world GOS project and the work that Stefan started around improving the pipeline for Packer. But that one is incoming. I, I also have the old pull request of uh, the, the parallelization of Packer that is in the back too. Yep, so that one optimization, the goal as a reminder is to have a faster feedback loop when we open a pull request on Packer image and less uh, failures. Um, we have the Windows container. And finally, uh, one that can be started on the Oktoberfest again, that one should be not easy, but absolutely available for a newcomer. Um, to replace the last docker-something images that we use on InfraCI, for instance, docker-elm file, where kubectl 1.26 will be. Uh, we have few tools like elm, elm file, etc. The goal is to make sure that these tools are installed on Packer. We have a list already available on the Packer image repo. Um, I believe creating one issue labeled Oktoberfest and good first issue will be a good uh, action call. Because once the Packer image for Linux has all of these tools, then we can start trying to swap the Docker images. And so that means less maintenance for us in the future. Yeah, the whole in one. Exactly. Docker Elm file, ah, she corp. So that's the first, uh, let's say, top level things that we work on uh, not as part of the milestone. It's a long, long running process, but we could benefit from the Oktoberfest. Uh, the second one are the major uh, upgrade. We have Puppet 7, uh, and we need to start thinking about this one soon because we have at least 14 modules on Puppet that we cannot update anymore because Puppet 6 is deprecated. Uh, so that one start to be important. Uh, I propose to wait after Kubernetes 1.26. But yeah, we have to think about this one, hence me mentioning it. After cube one background task, October first. Okay. Is there any other topics you want to bring to this meeting? Okay, so that means we can stop and I will publish all notes and recording as usual once available. So for everyone watching us, see you next week. Bye-bye.